Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussions on the global significance of the, of the Amazon rainforest. So this video is essentially on the amount of oxygen that is produced by the Amazon rainforest. Um, I put it in the context of the oxygen produced by all of the terrestrial vegetation and also um, in terms of the overall global um, uh, photosynthesis production of carbon, production of oxygen, and also the, the, the recycling you know, of, of it. Like what will happen also when, you know, if we planted a forest equivalent to the Amazon, what would happen if we lost the complete Amazon in terms of um, levels of CO2 in the atmosphere and in terms of oxygen. So, I've done a lot of um, looking to try to get to the truth because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Okay, so this paper is actually, this paper, this um, article in the conversation called Amazon, you know, from August 26, Amazon fires, Amazon fires are destructive, but they aren't depleting Earth's oxygen supply. Okay, so they've captured, these fires have captured worldwide attention, I think partly because it's the threat to oxygen that people have sort of opened their eyes about. Okay, um, the president of Brazil has greatly decreased, um, reduced environmental protections and increased agricultural development in the Amazon. So this is done by slashing the trees down in the forest, they dry out, and then burning them. Okay, and this is what's been going on, and this has caused an enormous uptick in 2019. It's not really the, the key point is it's not really the rainforest itself that's just burning. It's the trees are pulled down, left to dry out, and then those, are, those um, piles of wood are burned. Um, and we're in the dry season, and we're getting tremendous amounts of, of burning. So the resurgence in forest clearing which had decreased more than 80% following a peak in 2004, is alarming for many reasons, okay? Many species of plants and animals, their refuge is, refuge is for uh, indigenous peoples, and they have enormous stores of carbon as wood and other organic matter that would otherwise contribute. So there are a huge reservoir of carbon on the surface of the earth. Burning them puts all that carbon up into the atmosphere. A lot of it goes in the ocean and it greatly worsens climate change. Okay, and it has a significant effect. Okay, now some media accounts have suggested that fires in the Amazon threaten the atmospheric oxygen that we breathe. So the French president tweeted that the Amazon rainforest the lungs that produce 20% of our planet's oxygen is on fire. So this isn't quite the right number. The Amazon produces about 16% of terrestrially produced oxygen from photosynthesis. On a global scale, it produces about 9.5% of the oxygen that is produced by, on, by, on, on both land and in the oceans. Okay which is a huge a number, but what happens if the forests weren't there? Okay, um, so I'll, I'll get into the details of that from my best understanding. Okay, um, and this paper, th this, um, so basically one of the key things is that nearly all free oxygen in the air is produced by plants through photosynthesis, whether they're in the oceans or on land. About one third of land photosynthesis occurs in tropical forests, the largest of which is the Amazon basin, roughly about half of the um, tropical forests. But the, virtually all the oxygen produced by photosynthesis each year is consumed by living organisms and fires. Okay, so the, the microbes, uh, they consume oxygen in the process. Forest plants produce lots of oxygen, and forest microbes consume a lot of the oxygen. So the net production of oxygen by forests, indeed all land plants, is very close to zero. Now this is a very confusing thing to most people. Um, but this is the oxygen cycle here. So, um, you know, the, we have the atmosphere, we have the plant, terrestrial biosphere, we have the lithosphere, we have the marine biosphere. 
So on land, photosynthesis produces about 5,000, and that's in 10 to the 12 moles per year of oxygen. But respiration of the plants and the microbial decomposition uses up um, about 5,000. Okay, in the oceans, it's 3,800 photosynthesis and respiration, 3,800. So there's a balance of most individual systems, but some of the um, phytoplankton will sink to the seafloor and they will not um, consume oxygen they, you know, in the respiration process. So that oxygen eventually builds up in the atmosphere, okay, and gives us the 21% oxygen in the atmosphere. Okay, so. For oxygen to accumulate in the air, some of the organic matter that plants produce through photosynthesis must be removed from circulation before it can be consumed by resp you know, in respiration processes. It's, usually this happens when it is rapidly buried in places without oxygen, most commonly in deep sea mud, under waters that have already been depleted in oxygen. Okay, if there's um, high levels of nutrients, there's can be large algae blooms. The dead algae sinks into the dark water. Microbes feed on it. They consume oxygen, depleting it from the water around them. But when you go into deep depths, there's no oxygen. The microbes have taken the oxygen out of the water, so the organic matter won't decompose. It falls to the ocean floor and is buried there. So oxygen that the algae produced at the surface as it grew remains in the air because it is not consumed by the decomposer. So you have to look at the ecological uh, the whole process, okay? Now, only a tiny fraction of global photosynthesis is diverted by burial, and that adds to atmospheric oxygen. So over millions of years, it built up the level of oxygen in the atmosphere to the 21% where we are now, okay? Some of this oxygen reacts, you know, with metal, sulfur compounds on the Earth's crust, right? For example, iron, this is oxidation, and this helps regulate the oxygen levels in the atmosphere. So we don't get a continual increase of oxygen. We have tiny fraction of global photosynthesis, adding oxygen to the atmosphere, tiny amount of chemical reactions, reducing some, kind of leaves you to a stable situation. Okay, so the, the big threat from the Amazon burning is not to the level of oxygen in the atmosphere, it's to the uh, it's to the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, okay? Even if all organic matter on Earth was burned at once, less than 1% of the world's oxygen would be consumed, okay? So that's a, a key point. So I wanted to investigate more. So I, I did a, I Google imaged oxygen sources on Earth, okay? Got some stuff and I came across, um, you know, there's lots of numbers like this okay, which are incorrect, as I've shown you. And I came across this article, and I talked about this in the very first video. Yadvinder Mali travels in ecosystem science. This is from, this is an ecosystem ecologist and a professor of ecosystem science at Oxford University. And these are the numbers that I think are accurate. So does the Amazon produce 20% of our oxygen? The answer is no. Okay, the statement's basically incorrect and it's based on a partial understanding of how ecosystems function. There's lots of reasons to be concerned about the Amazon and the current fires, including regional climate, human health effects, loss of the biodiversity, global carbon emissions, okay? But running out of oxygen isn't one of them. So here is where the number comes from. The tropical forests account for about a 34% of terrestrial should be land-based global photosynthesis. This is shown in the figure below. So here's a figure. So this is showing global gross primary productivity or GPP of each major land biome. Okay, we need to multiply by 2.67 to convert to total oxygen production. Okay, so you can see the areas that are key here. This is, the units are in petagrams of carbon per square meter. You can see lots of carbon is, lots of photosynthesis is going on in the rainforest here, in rainforest here, and in rainforest here. These are the key regions. These are also biodiversity hotspots on the planet. And we're talking about the destruction right now, the willful human destruction of the Amazon rainforest, which the globe 
the world cannot allow to uh, happen because it will bring us all down. It will greatly accelerate climate change. It would produce, the loss of this would produce an increase of 40 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. Okay, total oxygen, so, so this is the plot. Okay, so this is the, the rainforest of the big red patches. The Amazon accounts for about one half of the world's rainforest. So if you take all of the world's rainforest, this plus this plus this, the Amazon is about one half of that. Okay, the reason why uh, tropical forests, rainforests photosynthesize so much, produce so much oxygen, take out so much carbon, is because they have a year-long growing season, good water, they use the water nutrients efficiently, but they're not constrained by winter or drought in general. Okay, now the units in these figure are in grams of carbon per square meter of area, surface area. You know, when we talk about the cumulative amounts, we talk about petagrams. Okay, petagrams of carbon taken up by photosynthesis can be converted to petagrams of oxygen released by multiplying by 2.67. Okay, 2.67 is just the molecular weight of oxygen, 32 divided by that of carbon, 12. We, this is a photosynthesis reaction. Okay, um, one pedigram is 10 to the 15th grams, also, a gig, also equivalent to a gigaton. Okay, so the total oxygen production by photosynthesis on land, okay, this data is about 330 petagrams of oxygen per year. The Amazon, just under half of the tropical forest, is about 16% of this, about 54 petagrams of oxygen per year. Rounded up, this gives you the 20% number, okay? But it's actually 16% and it's, that's, but it's not the whole global value. It's 16% of the oxygen being produced on land today is from photosynthesis in the Amazon, okay? That's the correct number as far as I know. Now you can divide up the different biomes here, and these are the tropical forests, and the Amazon's about half of that. Half of that's about, this is in petagrams of carbon per year, gross primary productivity. The tropical forest itself is about one-third of the global total. The Amazon is about one-sixth. It gives you that 16% number. Okay, to figure out the amount of oxygen that is produced by each of these biomes, multiply these numbers by 2.67. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, the phytoplankton in the ocean completes the picture, all right? Phytoplankton in the ocean generate about 240 petagrams of oxygen per year. So the gl total global photosynthesis, land and sea, produces about 240 plus the 330 okay which gives you 570 petagrams of oxygen per year okay so the amazon is producing 54 petagrams of oxygen per year divided by that um, 570 and that gives you 9.5 percent by my calculations also this means um, that in terms of carbon captured by photosynthesis globally, the Amazon captures about 9% of, of the uh, carbon. Okay. Now, the bigger point is that the Amazon consumes about as much oxygen as it produces. Okay. Plants produce oxygen through photosynthesis, but the same plants consume the equivalent of over half the oxygen they produce in their own respiration. Um, his team's research suggests more like 60% as opposed to half. Plants metabolize just as animals do, but at a slower rate. At night, there's no photosynthesis. Forests are net absorbers of oxygen. Okay, so the remaining 40% of the oxygen, Amazon oxygen budget is consumed mostly by microbes, breaking down the dead leaves and wood of the rainforest in a process called heterotrophic respiration. Okay, so in all practical terms, the net contribution of the Amazon ecosystem, not just the plants alone, to the world's oxygen is effectively zero. Okay, so here's what you have. You have the tree here. You have uh, photosynthesis. You have respiration, plant respiration of the tree. Then you have the, the stuff falling off the tree being broken down by microbial respiration. So the net effect is, you know, so the 